CYC is a free channel that presents the Word of God for everyone. Your support will help us to continue the mission. Visit our website, cycnow.com. Even a dollar will make a difference. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lukewarmness, as you may have heard from His Grace and um, it was Father Abraham, it's a very dangerous spiritual symptom. You know, when you are sick, you have symptoms, right? It's, it's a very... Um, very serious spiritual symptom that may affect our spiritual life. And we have to be very careful how to detect lukewarmness. Lukewarmness comes in two ways. It could be a temporary condition and it could be the standard in someone's spiritual life. This is when it becomes really serious, right? So when it's a temporary condition, it means normally I'm not lukewarm, but God may allow for some time of lukewarmness for our spiritual benefit. We call it in Arabic, تَخَلِّ النَّعْمَ So that تَخَلِّ النَّعْمَ يعني The visitation of the Holy Spirit abandons us for a period in order that we feel our weakness so that we don't fall into pride. Or for many reasons. Which is fine because this is, according to God's economy, it's good for us. But for this to be the standard of our spiritual life, then it becomes very dangerous. What does it mean to be lukewarm in our spiritual life? You know what it said in the book of Revelation, right? I would have rather that you be what? Hot or cold. What is being hot? Who knows? To be hot, what does it mean to be hot spiritually? Huh? Zealous, right? Fervent in the spirit, right? Like the saints, right? But what does it mean? Because God said, I wish you were. So what does it mean to be, we understand what it means to be cold. But what does it mean to be, I mean what it means to be hot. But what does it mean to be cold? Why does God say, I wish you were cold? What does it mean to be cold? To not know about the faith. Hmm? To not know about the faith. To not know about the faith. Okay. But why does God say, I wish that you were cold? Or to know but not believe. Hmm? To be away from God and know that you're weak. Yeah. Very good. To realize my sinful state. To, to know that I am away from God. Right? You know, I went on a trip with a group of youth um, to visit the seven churches, actually in uh, Turkey now, and we visited Athens as well. So when we visited Laodicea, they told us a very nice geographical fact. They said that the water comes from the mountain very hot, and as it passes through the city, Laodicea, it becomes warm, and by the time it reaches the sea, it is cold. As if the Lord is saying to them, that as the water that's passing through your land or through your city is lukewarm, your spiritual life is the same. Okay? Again, what does this mean? For the spiritual life or someone's spiritual life to be lukewarm, it means that they have so, much, so many practices, but only from the outside. No depth, no spiritual depth. A classical example is the Pharisee and the tax collector. They both went inside the temple to pray. What did the Pharisee say? 
Number one, so we, if you compare both prayers, the tax collectors stood far away, whereas the Pharisee went in, all the way inside. What does this tell you? By the way, the Lord said, or the gospel writer said, the Lord said this parable about people who are confident in themselves. <laughs> I'm confident in myself. I'm, you know, I do everything by the book. Right? What did, why did the Pharisee went all the way inside? An idea? Yeah. I am worthy. Because this is the content of his prayer. See God how good I am. When we stand before God, do we stand as sinners or as righteous? This is the problem of the lukewarm. The lukewarm stands before God as righteous. See God how good I am. And then he starts to mention how good he is. I fast twice a week. Do you know when the uh, Jews fast? Which days of the week? Huh? Monday, Monday, Thursday. Monday and Thursday. Do you know why? Moses went up on the mountain on a Thursday and came back on a Monday. 40 days. Right? So these are the two days they fast. So he's standing before God, telling him how good he is. I fast two days. I give my tithes. Right? I do my prayers. And I'm not like that sinner man. So he started to judge others. See what the problem is? Self-righteousness. And this is a huge problem for church goers. If we do everything by the book, right? What did the Lord say? The Lord said, and this is in the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 17. If we do everything, we should say we are unprofitable or unworthy or unprofitable slaves or servants. We have only done what we ought to have done. Right? But no one does everything perfectly. So I, even I haven't reached the level of the unprofitable servant. But for me to stand before God and enumerate my virtues, this means I don't feel my sin. Although Christ said, I came for the sinners, not for the righteous. So if I think of myself as a righteous person, then I have a spiritual problem, spiritual symptom that's very, very dangerous. So what kind of people are attacked by lukewarmness, the good people, right? The good people. Those who come to church, they are regular in church. They try to keep a good image about themselves. Sometimes they are deacons, right? Sometimes they are servants. Sometimes they are, they are well-known people, etc., so lukewarmness attacks many church goers. In a very simple word, lukewarmness is what? In one word? Huh? He? Hypocrisy. That's it. Lukewarmness equals what? Hypocrisy in the spiritual life. To be a hypocrite. To think of myself as good. When? I am not. Like the Lord when he said to one of the angels, you have an image that you are alive. Or you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. That's why the lukewarm people have to think, who am I trying to serve? Am I trying to be faithful to God? Or to people? Am I trying to, to appear good in front of the people? Or I want God to say that I am good, not the people. Right? So here in um, lecture number three, lukewarmness in worship.
in my prayer, in my, all my practices. Why do I pray? Why do I fast? Who am I trying to please? That's why the Lord said, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites. Who what? Who want people to see them praying. When, when you pray, enter inside your room, close your door, talk to your heavenly father. No one has to see you. But then you say, how come sometimes I have to do things in front of people? At least let your heart's intention not to be seen by others. But if you have to do things in front of people, then it's out of your hand. Okay? You know the best example I can think of? Do you remember when the angel came to the Blessed Virgin that the Otokos sent Mary and said to her that she will bear a son and he will be the son of the Most High. And then as proof, she said, he said to her, your relative Elizabeth is also pregnant. So she went to serve her in self-denial because she didn't have any hypocrisy, right? But then when God revealed her secret to St. Elizabeth and she said, who am I that the mother of God should come and serve me or visit me. Then the Theotokos didn't say, what can I do? I didn't say anything. God revealed my secret to her. So let me just go along. She didn't say that. What did she say? My soul magnifies the Lord, which means always the glory goes back to God. Who am I? And this is to be fervent in the spirit, to understand that even if I am good, right? Even if I am good, it is the Lord, it's not I. My, Lord, my soul magnifies the Lord. But if I'm not good, then I must be called, which means to realize my sinful state and seek a life of repentance. St. Augustine said something to this effect. He said, two kinds of people have spiritual tears that touch God's heart. Those who are fervent in the spirit because they see spiritual visions so they cannot bear it humanly speaking so their body reacts with tears. Okay? They see great mysteries. So physically they cannot bear it so they react with tears these are the hot and those who see their sins and live a true spiritual life like the woman who was caught, who was uh, you know she came to the house of simon the pharisee she also had spiritual tears but because she felt how cold her spiritual life is and her need for christ both of them have the same end result, which is the spiritual tears, but from different angles. But what about the lukewarm? No, I'm not going to have tears. Why? I don't see visions like the saints, and I don't feel that I am a sinner, so I have confidence in myself. I am self-righteous. I am good in my own eyes, which is a huge problem. Can you imagine if you go to the doctor and the doctor says to you, I think you are sick. You say, doctor, I think you are sick. I'm fine. <laughs> right? It's a problem if I'm sick and I don't feel it, right? So this is what to be lukewarm is. And it shows in everything that I do. I'm only a Christian from the outside, but absolutely no inner depth. And this is, a, this is the hugest problem of our spiritual life. So the, I think this is the most dangerous symptom that attacks many church goers. How we can't feel our sinfulness and we act as if we are righteous and we judge others, we talk about others, right? It's, it's, it's a sickness which has many other symptoms. I don't feel my sinfulness, I judge others. I mentioned to God how good I am. See, God, I do everything 
according to what I'm being taught. I confess some priests and some even lecturers like to give some prescriptions, right? Read the Bible every day, pray every day, take communion once a week, go for confession once a month, right? And you do that, you feel good about yourself. See, God, I'm good. I do everything that I'm told. And you feel good about yourself. You know what? As we come closer to God, we should realize our sinfulness and our weakness. The more we come closer to God, right? We realize His magnificence and our sinfulness. Like St. Peter, when he realized that the Lord is in his boat, he said to him, get out of my boat. I don't deserve that you stay in my boat. Right? At that time, when he reached that point, then the Lord said to him, now you have reached or you got the lesson. Now you will become fisher, fisher, fishermen to catch men, not fish. It's very important to know why, why we fall into this. Okay? So the first reason is the lack of love. Lack of love. And why is there lack of love? Because there is sin around us. As it says here, this Bible is full of pictures. I cannot even turn the page. <laughs> In the gospel, according to St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, it says, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold because lawlessness will abound. The love of many will become cold. Do you remember the message to the church of Ephesus, to the angel of the church of Ephesus? I have this against you, that you left your first love. Our first love to God, do you remember many years ago in your life, when you used to come to church when you were young, to wake up your parents to come to church? Do you remember those, those times? What happened? I know little girls and little boys who wake up their parents and tell them, let's go to church. We want to go to church. We love church. Go to Sunday school today and look at little kids, how they pray. And they pray with great faith. What happened? The love of the world has replaced the love of God in our hearts. Why? Sin, lawlessness means sin around us, abounds. We gain new information that makes the love for God not pure. The love of the world has entered inside our hearts. This is a huge problem. Our love for God decreases or sometimes goes away and our practices thereby become only superficial or from the outside because the true love of God is gone. It's no longer there. That's why the Lord, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Because lawlessness abounds means atmosphere around us is sinful. If people around you are drinking or doing drugs, or talking about relationships, and no spiritual encouragement in our spiritual life, where are we going to get that fervent spirit for our spiritual life? Because everyone around us does not encourage us to advance, but to a, to go back, to, to fall, right? The spiritual environment in which we place ourselves has great impact on our spiritual state. That's why in the book of the monks, the paradise of the fathers, it says, if you walk to the church with a spiritual person, they will help you to go ahead six months. But if you walk with a sinful person, 
they will cause you to fall back one year. See the difference? Six months and A. So it's easier to fall. We, know, we all know that. Right? So ask yourself, who do I associate with? Who are the people around me? That's one reason for lukewarmness. Let me ask you a question. If you are an intelligent, if you are an intelligent student, right? They place you in a special class, right? If, if you are an A student, they have a special class for you. Why? Because if you are with the average students, you will be happy with your state. But they put you in that advanced class to challenge you. So if you want to be with those who are spiritually lukewarm, you will be lukewarm like them because there's no challenge. But if you want to be like the saints, try to be with around good people who will challenge your spiritual life. Right? This makes sense. Another reason for lukewarmness is we don't experience the life of contrition and repentance. A lot of the fathers sometimes don't like to talk a lot about repentance because people don't want to hear that. Okay. People want to hear that they are good, they are doing well, and how great they are. But we need to hear about repentance because now the concept of purity if, 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 you, if you talk about purity, who, who is pure today, right? If you talk about keeping yourself for Christ, keeping your heart consecrated for Christ, stay away from sin, no, relations, no wrong relationships. Who wants to hear that in our age? You remember what St. Anthony said. There will be a time in which the crazy people will say about the normal people that they are crazy because they are not like us. Right? And we are supposed to be the light of the world to show the world how to live the Christian purity. But if, if now we are afraid to talk about purity, and even the fathers, when we go to confess, big and bad sins like such sins and the fathers feel what can we do everyone is sinning God absolve you my son God absolve you my daughter do you think what the result will be more sin right now our children cannot tolerate to hear this is wrong don't do this this does not match with our spiritual calling to which we are called the life of purity, the life of holiness. If you want to be a true Christian, you ought not to do these things. And the father rebukes you in confession. No, I'm not going to. Because this is a very difficult father. I'm not going to confess again. Right? Why? Because he rebukes me. What do you think? You want Abuna? Malish, my daughter, my son. Try not to do it again. I know sin is very difficult. And everyone, you know, is under temptation. God bless you. Right? We don't live a life of repentance. We don't feel that we need to repent because everyone is sinning. Everyone in the church, every girl has a boyfriend and every boy has a girlfriend. Why should I be different? This is driving me crazy. <laughs> because we... Because now, if we talk to you about this, you say, well, what do you want from us? Everyone is like this. No, not everyone is like this. It's wrong. And we have to tell you that. It is wrong. We live a life of lukewarmness with, because we don't speak enough about repentance and contrition. Contr what does contrition mean? In fact, the word in Hebrew... A contrite heart. You know what it means? It means, you know, when you break a glass and it becomes pieces, to be crushed, to feel I'm crushed 
because of my sin. And this is how David the prophet felt after his sin. And he said, I feel like I'm crushed because of my sin. And my sin is ever before me. And because we don't keep our sin before us, then we repeat the sin again. Therefore, we don't live a true life of repentance and we don't feel our repentance. And of course, we don't live a holy life and therefore our life becomes a lukewarm. And in my hypocrisy, I seek people to praise me. So instead of wanting to, listen, to hear more about how bad I am and how I need to repent, Oh, I am a good uh, deacon. Listen to how beautiful my voice is in that hymn. <laughs> See, all this what? If I'm praying, if I don't realize my sin, then I have a different attitude, right? So I seek praise from others, and therefore, I don't feel my sin. And as a result, I will live a lukewarm life. Another reason, I, I want to end because there are many reasons and uh, it took much time. Another reason for my lukewarmness is to feel I, ha I still have a long life to live. So I don't need to repent now. Why should I repent now if I still have many years to live? I'm still young. I'm still healthy. I don't have any need to repent now. Maybe when I grow old, then it will be the time to repent. The devil came to one of the monks and said to him, Why are you working so hard? Take it easy on yourself. You still have 20 more years to live. What do you think the monk replied? Only 20 years? I thought I have 50 years. Now I have to work even harder. Right? We never guarantee our life. Why should we postpone life of repentance as if we still have many years to live? We can't guarantee our... You know, you hear of many young youth, they die suddenly, right? Through accidents or through heart attacks. Many of them. How do we know when we will die? Why do we postpone repentance right so this is another reason another reason is to be too busy to reflect on my life just too busy with so many things that i don't have time to reflect on my life because if i sit down and reflect on my life in a true honesty with myself i can reach that humility and contrition that is useful for my spiritual life. Because if I have too many activities, someone said to me once something very useful. Servants sometimes become, become like a sign that's on the road, is showing the way, but it's stationary, not moving itself. So I'm showing others the way to God. But I don't move towards God. But the right way is to say what? Okay, let's walk together towards God. And sometimes when we have too many activities, I don't reflect on my inner life. And I get too busy with so many activities. And I become lukewarm in my service. And therefore, we have to have priorities in life. Next point, priorities. What are my priorities in life? In order to achieve this spirit of being fervent is God my first priority is my spiritual life the first priority or service even service my first priority who do I serve is it others or I am the first person to serve do I think of myself as the first person that I serve or I'm just serving others Oh, I'm going to sacrifice myself for the others. That's why St. Paul says, watch yourself and the others. Yourself first. The next point, by the way, now we have eight. eight this is the eighth point. 
The eight point, they are 10 altogether, 10 points. So we have two more plus this one. That our life, spiritual life, turns into routine. Routine. I do things in a routine way without thinking. In fact, in the paradise of the monks and fathers, there is a very strange story. It says that the devil once woke up a monk to pray. You say, why does he wake him up to pray? You know what? Because he doesn't want him to miss his routine. He did everything as a routine without depth, without spirituality. So he didn't want him to lose that routine because it has no, absolutely no spiritual effect. Right? So for our practices to become a routine is a sign of lukewarmness. It's just going through movements. Just going through movements. I, I say, and some, by the way, some of the deacons, my blessed children, the deacons, they are so, <clears throat> it's just going through movements. Just going through movements. I... I say, and some, by the way, some of the deacons, my blessed children, the deacons, they are so angry. Why did we miss that hymn? Why we didn't? Get angry at him. You raise your voice and you don't even know the hymn. Ya Amma Habibi Rabbina eyes want your heart. Okay. What's, what about my heart? Where is my heart when I say the hymns? Right? All this is done for our spirituality. Not God will uh, not accept our prayers if we miss one of the A. Ninth point is self-righteousness. We spoke about that already. To feel that I'm self-righteous and therefore um, my practices are not that fervent because or not, not that zealous because I must feel I am a sinner in order to feel my need for Christ. And finally, the tenth point is the loss or the absence of the goal. Absence, I don't see the goal in what I practice. Why do I fast? Why do I pray? I'm just doing it without a purpose, without a reason, without understanding why I do it. That's why St. Paul here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 says something يعني, very important for us to understand. He, sa he says, now, now they do this to obtain, yeah, therefore I run, I run. He, before that he says that an athlete what, focuses his eyes on the prize, right? Then he says, thus I run or thus I fight. Not as one who beats the air, because one that beats the air doesn't know why he's fighting. Therefore, I run. Thus, not with uncertainty. Not with uncertainty. Negative, negative means positive. With certainty. With cer you have to be, have, be certain why you are doing this. And sometimes when we do, don't know, we don't do it or we do it as a, as a routine, right? So if you fast... You either do it with a routine, without an effect, or you don't do it, which m many people after a while say, why am I doing it? And I don't benefit, therefore I will not do it. I will stop, and they stop fasting. Or they do it with spirituality. So it's with routine, or not to do it at all, or to understand and gain the benefits. If, unless you understand why you are doing it, you will not gain the spiritual benefit behind it to do it right. See? So this last point, reason for lukewarmness, is I don't have the goal. I don't understand why I'm doing it. And therefore, at one point, I will question myself, why am I doing it? And unless I have the answer, I will stop. Or I will just continue doing it as a routine without any spiritual fruit. These are the causes, and I hope that, I'm sure that, um, of course, the treatment will be just the opposite of what 
the causes are. It's easy, right? But it requires another lecture. Glory be to God forever. Amen.